Thanks for watching my video. So I don't know about you, but I often find myself making comparisons between The Sims 4 and The Sims 3, especially when it comes to The Sims 4's shortfalls, and there are plenty of them. But instead of just comparing the shortfalls of The Sims 4 to the successes of The Sims 3, I thought I'd take more of a fair look at the two and decide which I think is best. In this video, I'll be looking at some of the fundamental elements of both base games to determine which is more superior. This video is base game only because I plan to make a series on this, comparing the various similar expansion packs too, in order to definitively decide which of the two comes out on top. With this being the base game comparison, this will be the first episode in the series. Before we get into the video, just a couple of disclaimers. Number one, this is a base game comparison of what we have today. Let's keep things relevant. So what that means is that there will not be a reference to the elements that were missing from the initial release of The Sims 4. The black and white world and the lack of toddlers will not be considered here as that doesn't represent the game as it is now. And number two, this is all my opinion, and if you follow along with the scoring process yourself, you might find that your outcome is different to mine. I encourage you to follow along with me and let me know in the comments which comes out on top for you. Okay, that's enough boring stuff. Let's get into it. The Sims 3 versus The Sims 4. Yes, I made a presentation. I have time on my hands. So, I thought I would break things down into three sections. First of all, we're going to take a look at the worlds. We're also going to take a look at Create a Sim, and then lastly, and most importantly, the gameplay elements of both games, starting off with the worlds. So, I've broken this section down into five parts, design, size, customization, playability, and build and buy. Starting off with the design. In The Sims 3 base game, you start off with one world, Sunset Valley, plus the DLC world of Riverview. The design of The Sims 3 world is pretty much in line with the aesthetics you get in The Sims and Sims 2. It's a bird's eye view of the map and the ability to move around. In The Sims 4, you get three worlds to start with. Willow Creek, Newcrest and Oasis Springs. This time around, the world is just a still picture with some information about the various districts, if you hover over them. Also, once you play on one of the lots, you'll notice a lot of set dressing around you. Not interactable, but easy on the eyes, I suppose. The conclusion of this one is more of a matter of taste, but I'm giving the design to The Sims 4. The worlds are pretty, and it's nice to have more choice when it comes to world type. Quickly moving on to size, so The Sims 4 has a total of 57 lots spread across three worlds. The world of Sunset Valley in The Sims 3 has 97 lots not including the additional lots that you can just add in the world editor. Well, that was easy. This one goes to The Sims 3. Customization. In The Sims 4, when it comes to worlds, there is no customization. Not without mods, anyway. It's just a still picture that lets you click on a lot. In The Sims 3, however, you can place lots pretty much anywhere. You can also add decorations, landmarks, hot air balloons even. Fuck it. The world in The Sims 3 is undeniably more customizable than in The Sims 4. Good job, Sims 3. So now let's talk about playability of the worlds. First, there's the open world in The Sims 3. This fucker was pretty much the entire selling point of the game. The ability to wander outside the house and follow your Sims everywhere. Literally everywhere. Oh, except for inside buildings. Yeah, they're mostly rabbit holes. Which is better than set dressing, but still, watching a screen and waiting around for my sim to get finished with what they're doing sometimes makes me wonder who's really wearing the trousers. The lot types available in The Sims 3 are residential, park, graveyard, pools, libraries, gyms, art galleries, a beach, and a fishing spot. So how does The Sims 4 measure up? Well, there's no open world. But there are open worlds. And by that, I mean there is the ability to move between worlds easily. Sure, you have a few loading screens, but if it means that my Sims family aren't going to lose all of their existing relationships, then I'm happy enough with that. There are no rabbit holes, but lots of set dressing. The lot types in The Sims 4 are bars, gyms, parks, libraries, museums, pools, and nightclubs. So, who wins? Well, 
in my opinion, the ability to move around the world like you can in The Sims 3 does make the game feel more immersive. However, changing up the scenery is quite important to me, so being able to move around the world easily is more of a winner for me. Plus, the open world in The Sims 3 comes back into comparison later on. So this one goes to The Sims 4. And if you disagree, then maybe we should take this outside. Moving on to Build and Buy. Both games have pretty similar Build and Buy catalogues, and the building process itself is pretty similar too. There are a few differences though. In The Sims 3, you have a choice of 10 cars to choose from for your Sims. In The Sims 4, you have a total choice of zero cars to choose for your Sims. The Sims 3 allowed you to build five floors from the ground up, and The Sims 4 allows four floors. The Sims 3 has an auto roof function, and The Sims 4 makes you build your own roof. The Sims 3 has creator style, where you can literally customise your walls, floors, and every single piece of furniture you place. The Sims 4 has a much more limited selection by comparison. If it wasn't obvious before, this is going to The Sims 3. The Sims 4 never stood a chance in this section. So it's looking pretty good for The Sims 3 so far, but let's move on to Create a Sim. Starting with Traits and Aspirations. So in The Sims 3 Create a Sim, you can choose 5 individual traits for your Sims from 60 traits in total. That's 6-0 in the base game. And based on the traits you've selected, You'll then be able to choose which aspiration or lifetime wish you'd like for your sim. There are a total of 32 lifetime wishes in The Sims 3 base game. In The Sims 4, you have a total of 23 aspirations that sit within 10 aspiration categories to choose from. This time around though, you can only choose 3 traits for your sim and an extra one that's assigned to your sim based on their aspiration. There's a total of 27 traits to choose from, and an additional 11 traits that can just be assigned. I quite like the idea that Sims are given traits based on their aspiration, because it does make sense, but there is just so much more choice in The Sims 3, and so this one goes to The Sims 3. Alright, let's talk about design. Okay, so this one is quite an easy one for me. The Sims in The Sims 3 just look like little podgy pudding faces. There's a lot here that The Sims 3 does right, but the cartoon looking Sims in The Sims 4 is much more aesthetically pleasing in my opinion. So here you go Sims 4, you got one. Now let's look at customization, starting with The Sims 3. Again, it sort of mirrors the earlier Sims 2 in that you can modify your Sim using sliders for facial features. We also have a colour wheel for pretty much everything. You can have a Sim with four different colours in their hair, and again, you can use creator style to customise every part of your Sim's outfit. In The Sims 4, you can grab whatever part and modify it, making it easier to create more unique looking Sims. You are limited though when it comes to other aspects of Creator Sim. The skin and hair colours are very limited. On the flip side of that, probably a good time to say massive props to The Sims 4 for improving gender customization. The Sims has always been ahead of its time when it comes to sexuality and the ability to create what we can with masculine and feminine body types, walks and clothing, and it's definitely a leap in the right direction. Generally, I prefer being able to click on my Sims face and modify it, but the lack of customization with skin and hair color in The Sims 4 is just a deal breaker for me. The Sims 3 comes out on top here. All right, so finally, and probably most importantly, it's time to move on to gameplay. So let's start with life stages. Oh, you'll never guess who's going to win this one. So in The Sims 3, Babies come wrapped up in a blanket and can be carried around by their parents or put down on the floor. If you're feeling kind, you could buy your baby a crib to sleep in. Taking care of babies in The Sims 3 is a lot more hands-on compared to The Sims 4, where babies are just mere objects that cannot be placed anywhere outside of their cribs. Let's face it, no love went into The Sims 4 babies. So moving on to toddlers. Toddlers in The Sims 3 are not too far away from what we had in The Sims 2. My favourite part of raising toddlers in The Sims 3 was that as a parent you'd have to teach your toddler to walk, talk and use the potty for them to age up well. 
In The Sims 4, however, toddlers can pretty much teach themselves everything. No need for an adult. Part of me feels like The Sims 3 was better because it just made parenting feel more meaningful. But the toddlers were so well made in The Sims 4 and they are so freaking cute that I think The Sims 4 did them better. And then there were children. In The Sims 3, children can start building skills that they carry over into adulthood. Children can build all skills except charisma, instrument skills, athletic and gardening. However, they can be tutored over gardening or charisma by a sim that has a maximum logic skill. It's also possible to have children make money on their own, as there are activities that they're able to do that make profit, such as fishing, painting or selling lemonade or baked goods. In The Sims 4, children can build skills, however they are child-specific skills, so they don't actually count towards the adult skills. Apparently, they come with benefits, like if your child maxes the imaginative skill, they find it easier to build similar skills as adults. But in my opinion, I call bullshit. Children are able to complete school projects to go towards their grades, and they also have small tasks to complete to get a higher grade, usually based on improving some sort of skill. I think purely for the fact that they can do more, I'm giving this one to The Sims 3. Then we get to teens. So teens in The Sims 3 actually look like teens. They were taller than children and shorter than adults. Teens can take extra responsibilities as well, like they can get a part-time job after school so they can earn that beer money. They were unable to get a full-time job because they still had to go to school. That's right kids, stay in school, keep your noses clean. Teenage Sims also have a later curfew of 11pm, which is an hour later than the curfew for child Sims. And teens who violate their curfew will also get a positive out-after-curfew moodlet while doing so. And if a teen is caught staying out past curfew, they'll be picked up by the police and taken home. And then in The Sims 4. Teenage Sims look the same as young adult. Same height, same everything. I've been caught off guard by it while doing one of my many woohoo challenges. Teens are unable to try for a baby, but they can sort of woohoo, although it's just called mess around, I think. Teens can also work a part-time job, as they can in The Sims 3. But as a family gameplay simmer, I think it's pretty lame that The Sims 4 teams aren't even different height to the adults. So for that reason, Sims 3 takes the gold for teens. Speaking of young adult and adult, in The Sims 3 and Sims 4, young adults are pretty much the same as adults but with fewer wrinkles and more chance of conceiving. In both games, this life stage can work a full-time job, get married and start a family. I'm not really going to spend too much time talking about this life stage because I don't think there's really much difference between the two games. It's the effort put into the other life stages that I'm more concerned about, to be honest. So let's just move on to Elders. In The Sims 3, Elder Sims are hunched over and they have grey hair. They also have their own selection of creator sim clothing and accessories. The Sims 4 are pretty similar, except that the elders in this game can wear pretty much everything that the teens and adults can. They don't have their own selection of cast items. When Sims are elders, they will perform tasks at a slower speed compared to younger Sims. When they perform heavy tasks like fitness or woohoo, they'll become exhausted which can cause them to be dangerously tired, and if they continue doing so, they'll die of overexertion. And just like in the previous games, elders can retire. Overall, when it comes to all life stages, I think The Sims 3 just does it better. So, moving on to hobbies. So most of the hobbies in both games are linked to skills, such as fishing, gardening, guitar, and loads more. In The Sims 3, you have 11 skills to develop, and in The Sims 4, you have 18 skills. The same skills as The Sims 3, apart from collecting, but I'll get onto that in a sec, plus the skills of comedy, mischief, mixology, piano, programming, rocket science, violin, and video gaming. In The Sims 4, the hobby of collecting actually doesn't come as a skill like it does in The Sims 3, however it's still a big part of the game. In The Sims 3, your sim has a collecting journal that can be access through your sims inventory. In The Sims 4 you kind of have a similar setup. It's like a list that shows you everything that you've collected during your sims life. There are nine types of collectibles in The Sims 3 such as gems, metals, beetles, 
butterflies, and then there are 16 types of collectibles in The Sims 4, such as crystals, frogs, fossils, etc. I know that was quite a very high level overview, but this one goes to The Sims 4 for offering more choice when it comes to collectibles and more skills in total. Now let's talk about careers. In The Sims 3 you have 11 full-time jobs and 5 part-time jobs. Promotions happen when your sim has the skills required to get to the next level. Promotions can happen one day after the other and additionally your sim will get suggested objectives to do as well in order to move up the ladder faster. The Sims 4 has 12 full-time jobs and 5 part-time jobs. In order to get a promotion you must have the required skills and also complete tasks that are related for the job. For example, if you work in the fashion career, then your sim might have to go around performing fashion-related social interactions to get a promotion. It's also very unlikely that you'll get a promotion every day as the performance bar goes up quite slowly, meaning that in most cases it takes at least two working days to get a promotion. Because of the open world in The Sims 3, it means that you can literally follow your sim to their work and just wait outside for them. In The Sims 4, your sim will literally just disappear and come back when they've finished. With that in mind, I much prefer the way jobs are done in The Sims 3, and you could argue that it's just because of the open world, but there are ways The Sims 4 could have done this similarly without the use of the open world. The Sims 4 University expansion pack proved that it's possible to have your sims go into a rabbit hole and to attend class, so they could have had it so that your sims will just disappear unless they're in close proximity to their workplace, in which they could have been similar to The Sims 3. Yes, it would have meant making rabbit holes for every job, but open world or not, they managed to do it in The Sims 3, and that's why it's winning this one. Over to a brief overview of functionality. So The Sims 3 has an open world, making getting around a lot quicker, as we don't have loading screens. Sims 4 is a little more back to basics. There is some freedom when it comes to wandering around the neighbourhood, so it's like a blast from the past with a little taste of the open world we had in The Sims 3. Travel is far easier in The Sims 4. I didn't say quicker, I said easier. When it comes to travelling around the neighbourhood, The Sims 3 100% does it best, but moving your sims in between worlds is far easier in The Sims 4. If you try to move part of your family to another world in The Sims 3, guess what? Your sim will lose all of their existing relationships with The Sims in the previous world. This was surprisingly a tough call. I initially thought that I'd have my mind made up pretty quick on this one, but the whole moving around the world thing is quite a big one for me. That being said, I have found that due to the constant loading screens, I am less inclined to take my sims out anywhere, because I just don't have the patience to sit through them. So in the end, we rarely ever leave the house, and with that in mind, the convenience of the open world comes out on top for me. And so when it comes to functionality, this one goes to The Sims 3. Also, they have cars. And then lastly, behavior. What can I say about behavior? Well, in both games, our Sims have traits, which come with individual interactions and behaviors as part of their traits. One of the biggest selling points of The Sims 4 was the emotions. So in this game, the traits not only have interactions, but they also have an impact on your Sims' emotions. Emotions can be difficult to control, and your Sim will often just refuse to do something you want them to do, simply because they're just not in the mood. Sims who are sad will cry themselves to sleep, Sims who are angry will use bad language when doing any old tasks, and Sims who are uncomfortable will do nothing you ask them to do. Wants and whims are also things that are in both games. And then relationship-wise, when it comes to unfaithfulness, The Sims 3 is pretty fair game. They are essentially just a bunch of pixelated, roundy sex pots. It's very easy to have your sim engage in relations with an already married sim. In The Sims 4, however, it's not so easy. In my experience, married sims are much harder to woohoo and will generally just dismiss any advances my sim makes on them, no matter how much of a dish they are. There is a lot to be said about behaviours, but I think that that would be an entire video of its own. So based on what we've looked at so far, this one is going to go to The Sims 4.
So, based on my analysis, it looks like The Sims 3 base game truly is better than The Sims 4. Let me know in the comments if you got a different outcome from me, and also let me know if there are elements that you disagree with. Otherwise, tune in to the next uh, episode in this short series where we'll be comparing The Sims 3 Generations to The Sims 4 Parenthood. Thanks again for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, maybe subscribe to the channel. And it also wouldn't hurt to give the like button a smash in the back doors too. Bye bye.